Hello and welcome to a very special How I Paint Things. Now not very long ago I painted an entire 1000 point bolt action army in a week, most of an infantry, and this is how I did it. So with a new starter box coming from Warlord Games, A Gentleman's War, which is going to focus on the desert conflict between the 8th Army and the Africa Corps, I thought it would be timely to go back and revisit an old subject that I have covered before, but using a slightly different method, couple of different colors, and arguably much faster. So all of the paints will be listed in the description below. Let's keep things nice and quick, let's get started. Now I would suggest when you are priming these guys, the easiest way to do it is to use Army Painter's Skeleton Bone, or any other light bone color that you can find. Citadel's Wraithbone might be a little bit light, but we are looking for a sort of sun bleached, worn appearance to the uniform. So anything bone colored will work fine. And we're going to leave that as our first color. If you need to, if you've missed any areas, you can go back with a little bit of skeleton bone from the pot and tidy it up or add some more if you need to. But in this case, I've been pretty lucky. I've gotten pretty good at priming these dudes. Now, to my mind, the essence of speed painting is having a plan and knowing that when you finish one step, you're going straight to the next color that you know. This is obviously a little bit more useful when you're doing batches of five to 10 guys at a time, but it also helps if you're painting individuals. So I always start with these eight army figures with the skin. And this here, this is heavy skin tone. It is a Vallejo game color, uh, color paint, if you will. And uh, anywhere that you can get Vallejo colors, you'll be able to get this. And it is by far the most useful I've found for doing uh, Sikh, you know, Indian skin without being super dark and chalky. Uh, if you can't get your hands on this, then cork brown is a pretty close alternative. Now that's a really nice skin tone. And the bonus with it as well is that it will cover very well over that light primer. Now the next stage up is going to be to do the webbing. And for this, I'm using Iraqi sand. I'm going to put up on screen here a comparison of the Blanco shades that we used to treat the webbing that was worn in this period. And interestingly enough, in the desert, because you didn't really need to protect your uh, your webbing, you know, the canvas webbing from the elements as much, it was quite common that they would leave it untreated and you'd get that beige color in the background. So that's why we're going with Iraqi sand here. I'm using a fairly large brush, and this will make more sense if you're painting you know, five or 10 of these guys at a time, because you bang, 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 smash out all of their packs, and gaiters, and then swap on down to a smaller brush and you can start painting in straps, belts, and what have you. Now what I have is some US field drab, and I'm gonna paint in both his water bottle and also the uh, ground sheet cover that he's got sticking out of his pack. Now in reality, these would have been very slightly different browns, but at this sort of scale and for our purposes, it's close enough, it is not gonna matter. And while we're painting browns, I have here beige brown, and we're gonna paint in his rifle. Now, some folks will also suggest orange brown, works quite well for the wood on this. And you'll see I'm going straight over the top of anything that's gonna be black or metallic later, will not matter. We're getting down to the last couple of colors here. Now, obviously khaki socks, we don't need to think too hard about what color to paint those, I have here khaki, <laughs> and just a quick coat of this will do the job. Slow down when you come near his legs and his gaiters. This is really what I was mentioning earlier about the tidy up stage. Now when it comes to the turban, uh, you'll see throughout that I have painted this already, but I'm gonna cut that because I don't wanna use that color. I have instead here, this is dark sand. And this would be my suggestion too for helmets. You'll find ordinarily straight over skeleton bone, it will cover in one go. So <laughs> you won't have to paint two over a medium gray base coat if that's what you paint. Now the colors of the turbans, ordinarily you could just leave them the same color as the rest of the uniform. They were from a similar khaki shade, but I want them to look ever so slightly different. What I'm gonna use now, this is German gray, and it's a really nice just off black. It's got a little bit of a bluish tint to it, which makes it really good for gunmetal and what have you as a base coat. So carefully now I'm going to paint in the furniture, it's not the furniture, the working parts of the weapon. I'm also going to use this to paint in his boots. 
and his bayonet sheath, and his beard. Now I'm going to leave his eyebrows unpainted for now. If we block those in with the same black, shade them and then highlight them, they're going to look immense. So we'll get to those later. The last thing we're going to do is apply some Iron Hand Steel to the bayonet. because These are actually quite a shiny, fairly prominent steel color. Now don't worry if you haven't got your Citadel stuff or whatever. Any medium gunmetal silver sort of color will work here. So his bayonet. The last thing I need to do is to paint in the sand on his base. For this, I'm using brown sand. This will depend, of course, on how you've decided you're going to base your guys, but I want them to match the rest of my army. Now, once everything has finally dried, that is all of our base coats done. You can go around now and do any bits of tidy up that you need to, but hopefully you don't need to. So now we're going to use our shade. Now, I've mixed up here Ali's Brown Liquid. Now, this is from a fellow by the name of Ali Morrison, and if you don't know him, I'll let you Google him. He is a wonderful fella, a very nice man as well. What this is, is two parts Agrax Earthshade, two parts Seraphim Sepia, one part Lamian Medium, and then a little bit of Drakenhof Nightshade. Now, if you ask me what that's going to look like in the new uh, Citadel Shades, I have no idea. I've actually spent a fair chunk of cash to make sure that I don't have to find out, because this does exactly what I wanted to do. Uh, you could use substitutes from the Army Painter range as well. Um, similar paint colors will give you a similar result. But however you choose to do it, what I'm going to do is load up my brush and start applying this fairly generously over the entire miniature. Now, it's important as well that I am getting it into all of the recesses, because anywhere which I miss is going to glow by comparison. And you'll see straight away why we've used such light uh, base coats and primer, because the brown liquid is going to add quite a bit of warmth here. So I'm going to go over the entire miniature, finish this off, and we'll leave him for about half an hour to dry. And depending on how quickly you need reinforcements on the table, that is a finished soldier. But of course, there are a few little things we can do from here, which I did on my army, and it's not going to take a huge amount of extra time to make him a little bit nicer. So I've popped out some dark sand onto the paper that I'm using as my backdrop here, and I've got a scraggly old brush, something small, and I'm going to very lightly flick along the edges of our Iraqi sand from earlier. So if you do want to highlight areas like his pouches on the front, you know, his webbing pouches, you can use an ordinary brush. Uh, but this is going to very quickly add just a little bit more depth to some of these areas. Don't worry about catching the brown stuff. It'll just look faded and old. I've also used a little of that dark sand to dry brush his turban at the same time and the basing material. Nice and quick, and that's done. So now we're going to highlight his skin, and I'm going to turn here to cork brown, which is a little bit lighter than the heavy skin tone we used earlier. And what we'll do is just highlight some of the areas of skin where we want a little bit more depth there. So backs of knuckles, it's always a good spot for this. And up on his face, areas like the bridge of his nose. And we'll just get in and do a little bit of his cheekbones. And I'll highlight his beard and his eyebrows. I have here basalt grey. This has got a very faint blue tint to it, the same as our German grey underneath, so they work very well with one another. I've got a slightly finer brush than I would ordinarily use, and I don't want to add very much of this, just enough to define some of the edges of his beard. Too much of this, and it's going to turn grey. When it comes to highlight his uniform, I'm not going to do very much. What I have here is Screaming Skull from Citadel. You could mix in a little bit of brain matter beige to your skeleton bone, or pale sand from Vallejo is quite similar here, though a little more, a little more pale, I would say. What I'm going to do is take me time here, and just pick out some of the edges, and extreme corners of the folds in his clothing to make this look just a little more faded. Now, anywhere you dip into your, your shading like that. Oops, <laughs> you can come back with a little bit of the brown liquid and essentially dip in there and fix that up if you want to. But remember, we're looking at getting these guys on the table very quickly. Don't worry too much. Don't sweat the little stuff. And then as a final stage, I've got here a little Iron Warriors, which is a really dark gunmetal. So 
You can substitute this as you like. I'm going to use this to pick out just a couple of areas on the weapon and make some of those areas look a little bit more like dull metal. And that's all of the painting done. What I'm going to do now is take him outside and hit him with a matte spray varnish. You'll see it's quite simple, but works well on the table. I'm going to add just a couple of tiny wee dots of PVA and some static grass into his base for a little bit of a scrubby undergrowth. And let's get a look at what he looks like when he is all finished. And there at last, our Indian soldier is complete. And I gotta say, that little bit of grass on the base, because when you're painting World War II era miniatures, when they're painted correctly, they tend to be quite boring. You know, <laughs> all beiges and browns, but that little spot of green, I think, really sets them off without having to add anything to the palette and make it inaccurate. This is pretty close to historically accurate, I would suggest. So, yeah, not a lot of fuss making that perfect. So, as always, thank you very much to Exit 23 Games for the light and sound equipment, as well as all of the wonderful patrons who are keeping me ticking in paints and glue, including my producers, Alan Nuttall, Kyrie Crawford, Trainboy, Rod, and Jimmy. Your support means the world, folks. Any questions or anything, feel free to drop them in the old comment box below. My Twitter and Instagram are both linked there too. So, thank you very much for your time, one and all, and you all enjoy the rest of your day.